When you think Black history, the first thing that comes to almost everyone's mind is slavery. The vast majority of my experiences in white culture are that they don't have a lot of exposure to Black culture outside of media. Canadians propagandize ourselves. We give ourselves a daily dose of propaganda, which is un which I'm sure that the people who produce it are unconscious of, because they grew up with it. Any Canadian born and raised or who grows up here is subjected to a daily information barrage, the point of which is to say, aren't you lucky to be here and not in the crazy United States? We have social policy based on a history of what we believe, not on what is true. In Uganda, I learned, you know, people came, white people came and took them by force. Here, I learned a whole new thing um, that the um, chiefs, I guess, of uh, Africa were selling them people. Um, I don't know what to believe, you know? I don't know what story is true. The history is written by the victors. And history is also destroyed by the victors, which means that everything we know about Black heritage is really difficult to find. We should never think that just because there is a passage of centuries or decades or what have you, that the world still is not stuck essentially in 1492 and the power relations that came out of that. We're still there. And, and uh, all the struggles of people of color, BIPOC, uh, to use that acronym, are related to the original imperialistic global theft of resources and labor. We've been telling you this, and telling you this, and telling you this. We've been telling you this since the RCMP was created to remove indigenous bodies and put them in residential schools. We've been telling you this. There is this inherent assumption that history in Guelph is white. There's this inherent assumption that Guelph is a white now. There's this inherent, whereas in the black community, a lot of black folks are like, well, black's the Guelph's the story. Why well, black as well? We literally have Heritage Hall, right? Like we literally have all of these other, you know what I mean? Like the Lincoln Alexander up at the university, you know, like the, there's, there's, there's a lot of black history here too, but it feels invisible. Where do you get any kind of understanding of difference? And how does your, um, and how does your difference change without the exception of, oh right, the guy who lives down the street from me, I think he's black. Um, yeah, but he's a good guy. I see him outside with his kids. Like, I don't know, like, what's the problem? Why are we, like, why are people marching in the street? I don't understand, you know what I mean? So there's that whole piece that you just, I am only in myself, born 1960. I am the fifth generation born outside slavery. Now, let me put it this way. My father was uh, the grandson of former slaves. My father was the grandson of former slaves. Uh, and and uh, he was born in 1935. So slavery, people like to think of slavery as something that was like ages ago, eons ago. No, it's not. We fight because even if we have the rights, we still don't have them. And to see kids be put into situations of broken homes because of the systemic structures we face from education to medical, kids who are losing their moms because black and indigenous bodies don't matter as much when they're in the hospital, right? This conversation of, you know, trading white hoods for white coats. We're literally in a white supremacist society completely and utterly generated on those norms, right? Which are implicitly anti-black, right? They're implicitly because the entire system was generated to treat black people like commodities, right? Like that's what the entire system was generated to do, right? Like you're coming up with a judicial system, you're coming up with your, you know, like all of your different systems, you were, were designed with that bias. Because we don't know our own history, we accepted the American history for Black History Month. But in Canada, Black History Month should be in August. 
because Emancipation Day in the British Empire was August 1. It wasn't February, it was August. Also, all of the great black festivals in the country are in August. Uh, we think of the Caribbean Festival or Caravan, as I still prefer to call it, uh, in Toronto. Uh, Nova Scotia has the Association. There also, uh, there's also Emancipation Day in, in uh, Windsor, also Owen Sound, Chatham, Ontario, all celebrating Emancipation Day uh, in August, of course. Uh, and and uh, also, I think in Montreal, there's a Carafet, which also takes place in August. So in our own African-Canadian, Black Canadian history, August is the month, folks, August. <laughs> Not February, but I suppose it's too late now. We teach culturally responsive and respective pedagogy because we have a bunch of children in front of us who are culturally diverse, which is just so wrong, right? All of what needs to happen and how we talk about equity, diversity, social justice, all of those things need to happen. In some cases, more in the schools where those children have parents who rule the world because they're going to rule the world and if we get them to understand how the how the world works from a social justice perspective we i mean we are the teachers we have the power right we're we're what changes the world just so, just so i'm saying right um Aside from children's parents, I think educators have the most impact. And so for social change to happen, it's us. We have to do it because many of them, their parents aren't going to do it for them. And so we have to inculcate them in the way of social change. Our, our social justice frameworks are based on history, right? And um, the, those frameworks are very helpful for unpacking how those overlapping layers of power created systemic oppression and how they continue to. We need to look at a history uh, of Canada across Canada, uh, which has allowed racist violence to be perpetrated against whole groups of so-called visible minorities, keeping in mind that even that phrase is extremely problematic because that phrase itself comes back on saying about status. Visible minority is a status. That's your status. Your status is you're a visible minority. You get classified in that way. What the frames also do is they can tend to paint everything with the same breath, right? And then what ends up happening for me is I get locked into a definition of pain. I get locked into a definition of my marginalization. I get locked into these positions that I have to occupy based on my history that I've experienced, right? And those experiences in and of themselves are not the dividing factor. The dividing factor happens when I choose, when, when we choose to perpetuate that harm and that history. That's where it happens. It happens in the choices we're making now is where the further harm happens. We have to keep that what has been done to us, right? We have to keep that we have to keep that conversation going, but we have to layer on top of that every single thing that has happened over the course of time that we have done for ourselves and for everybody else in the world, right? Because the other piece of course to it is that all of the um all of the normal, the normalcy, the 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 um, the extraordinary, the amazing, the get up in the morning, go to work, come home at night, feed your children, send them to school, all that normal stuff that everybody does, we've all done that over the course of time, even when they're killing us on the streets, right? Right? We've raised our children. We've we've done what needed to be done. And I think that's why um, the idea of, of renaming the month Black Heritage Month is so brilliant, because it becomes not about this history of pain. It becomes also about our hopeful, joyful future. 
right now we're the ones writing history. We're the ones who determine what is going to be written about us in the future. You know, so that sort of power is incredible. So we get to decide how we're going to be seen um, for the future generations. Our group members have created these resources um, from YouTube videos to novels, and those resources will be sent out to elementary school and secondary school classes. And so teachers can also utilize that in the classroom. It's so, it's something that I wish I had when I was growing up because I didn't have that. I just, I, w I grew up in a little small town and we hardly even recognize that February is such an important month, right? So I just, I don't know, I just feel so like, I don't even know how to describe it. It ultimately becomes this process of re-engaging with your ecosystem that you're a part of, right? And that's what I'm saying when I say, like, I think some people are like, oh, I can never understand what your experience is. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, to a degree, to a degree. I think it really starts with having empathy for others. I obviously know I am not a part of the black community, but I am a person of color and I can just um, use my voice to help them and fight for them. Because like I said in the previous questions, when we come together as a community, we are truly stronger and better. There are pathways to understand, right? There are pathways to understanding enough to be able to treat another person with dignity and respect. There's enough, more than enough, because there's enough there to become friends, right? To care about each other, to love each other, to bear children together, there's enough, right? There's enough for legacy and lineage to grow and thrive and prosper. There's enough, right? And we are enough. I think that's what I want for our babies. I want our babies to understand that they're, that who they are and how they operate in the world is so, so much of it is determined by their history. It is so very true. And the, and the oppression that has been there and the oppression that is there now is going to inform who they are and how they operate However, there is a, there's another layer to their lives, right? And, um, and that's got to be the responsibility of everybody else to make sure that not just our children, but the, the kids who are like, and not just, and, it's not just about kids either. It's about, you know, humanity, right? That everyone needs to understand what that, what that history involves. That it's just not, um, it's just not about oppression, right? There's some, some serious, amazing, phenomenal um, work that, uh, that we have done. And, uh, yeah, maybe that's it. I'll figure that out. <laughs>